mega church pastor Andy Stanley doesn't believe the Ten Commandments apply to modern day Christians. A well known pastor and author is urging Christians to stop creating monuments dedicated to the Ten Commandments as they, quote, don't apply to Christians anymore. In a column for Relevant Magazine, Stanley wrote, he believes this is because of a greater command given by Jesus. He said, quote, participants in the new covenant are not required to obey any of the Ten Commandments found in the first part of their Bibles. He went on to say participants in the new covenant are expected to obey the single command Jesus issued as part of his new covenant, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Are you shocked to hear this? Interestingly, it is what most of us were taught. Could this doctrine be at the root of the strange things that are happening in our world? A doctrine that made it easy for man to implement legal yet wicked laws. This is part two of our series, Legal Yet Wicked. Is it true that the Ten Commandments do not apply to Christians? Let's talk about it on today's session. So now we're going to delve into this doctrine of grace that says keeping the Ten Commandments is not necessary for Christians. My question is, if it's not for Christians, who is it for? Are we to believe that Christians don't sin? This article says that Christians have committed terrible crimes over the centuries. Why is that? Why is that indeed? So let's see some of the crimes Christians are committing. This article says nearly 1,700 priests and other clergy members that the Roman Catholic Church considers credibly accused of child sexual abuse are living under the radar with little to no oversight from religious authorities or law enforcement. Decades after the first wave of the church abuse scandal roiled U.S. dioceses, an Associated Press investigation found. So is this behavior being condoned by the Roman Catholic Church? Let's keep going. Listen to this one. This is from ABC News. Pastor sentenced to over 1,000 years for sex abuse. An Alabama youth evangelist was sentenced Friday to more than 1,000 years in prison after pleading guilty to multiple child sex charges. The 39-year-old Bowen faced charges that include sexual abuse, sodomy, enticing a child for sex and traveling, to meet a child for sexual abuse, he still faces other charges in the Birmingham area. And now we have this report. It says Texas mega, mega church pastor sent to prison for a fraud scheme. This pastor, Pastor Caldwell, has been a spiritual advisor to two U.S. presidents. He's been sentenced to six years for bilking investors out of millions of dollars. Now we see cases of theft, abuse, and fornication. And these acts are being committed by church leaders. Now the law of the land has determined their fate. So when did the Ten Commandments stop being a moral source code in the world? Bottom line is we have lost respect for the authority of the Most High's word. His commandments became subjective. It's no longer an absolute because we're not rightly dividing the word and it has created confusion. So I'm going to let you hear a message from former Pastor Miles Monroe on this doctrine that says believers are exempt from the law. Listen to this. 
So we're not here to put pressure on you with laws created by men. But at the same time, the kingdom of God is a country and it has laws. And like any country, you got to obey laws to live in that society. Let's read the words of Jesus. Right across the page, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said these words. Do not think that I have come to destroy the law. Now why does he say this? Because here he is preaching a message of a kingdom and he knew that the Pharisees and Sadducees and those religious leaders would attack him on the issue of law. They'd say, oh, are you telling us that we can just live loose and don't obey God? And, and matter of fact, many times they would bring up Moses and say, Moses' laws, are you telling people to break Moses' laws? So he started off by saying, first of all, let me just clear the air. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law. And this has been the problem in the 20th century church. We have gone to the extreme where we have become so graceful, we are lawless. We become so bent on forgiveness of God that we use it to violate God's laws. Oh, I'll be forgiven tomorrow, so I'll sin now. That's what we say. Oh, I can always go to God after I do this and he'll forgive me because he has to forgive me because he's a God of love. See, and so we use that grace to violate God's law. Christ says, look, let's just clear the air. By the way, this is the beginning of his ministry. He begins it by saying, look, the king of God is here and it doesn't come to destroy law. It's built on law. Matter of fact, read the rest of the verse with me. Let's read it together. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. Now the word prophets here, we can deal with that in a minute, but that's important because the prophets are simply those who repeated the law. God state the law, the prophets keep repeating it. I didn't come to destroy the law nor those who repeated it. But I came what? But I came to fulfill the law. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappears, not the smallest letter, nor the least stroke of a pen in the law will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Do not think. Say that with me. Why does he have to say that? Because he knows what you're thinking. I'm free. Free. He says, yes, you're free, but not from law. You're free from the burden of trying to please God by keeping rituals. You're free from that. You're free from trying to impress God with all of your holy living and all of your you know, oblations and all your sacrifices. You're free from that. I've, I've become the lamb. You don't need that anymore. You're free from that. But you ain't free from keeping God's laws. Let's take it a step further. Do not think. Say that with me. Write this down, please. What does he mean by do not think? I did some research for you. The Hebrew word means do not consider. It also means do not imagine. He says, get that out of your mind. Do not dream that I've come to abolish the law. Don't even think about it, he says. We have literally made it a doctrine. I am free from law. I'm under grace. We've made it a doctrine. We actually call it the doctrine of grace. What are you telling God? He says, look, do not assume that I have come to abolish the law. Do not suggest to anyone that law is finished. To live in God's kingdom and expect God's promises to be fulfilled, you have to also obey the laws of God's promises. Listen to me, friends. Even in your own country, you can't just live any way you feel like. 
The constitution of our country and Jamaica and Barbados and St. Thomas and Kitts and Grenada and Guyana and America and Canada and England, everyone has a constitution. Now the constitution has in it the promises to the citizen. A constitution is actually the aspirations of the people constituted in a document and in that document are all the promises made to the citizens that are their rights. Now in order for you to get your rights it also constitutes the laws by which the citizen will live so the citizen could demand the promises in their constitution. In other words the condition for receiving what's promised in the Constitution is you must be a law-abiding citizen. You murder someone in the Bahamas, we take you out of society and put you in a little cell. Why? You can no longer live in the environment where you can experience the promises of our Constitution. Are you telling me that God is worse than us? Is God slack concerning his promises? You need to go back and read his constitution. One of God's favorite words, write this down, I-F. His favorite word, if you would do this, if you would do that, if you would obey me, if you would keep, if, then I will, then I will. Put it there, if is before the then. Some of you may remember when you were young and you were outside playing with your friends. When it started getting dark, you knew you had to go home, but you were having so much fun, you just didn't want to go. So if one of your siblings came up to you and said, it's time to go home, oh, you could just blow that off and keep on playing. Why? They had no authority. But as soon as they said, mama said or daddy said that got your attention because you knew that there would be consequences if you disobeyed mama or daddy had the authority and the power to give you an attitudinal adjustment <laughs> all you needed to hear was mama said so now people are getting mixed messages and the church is directly at fault. We say stealing is wrong, fornication is wrong, lying, sodomy, murder, they're wrong. It is wrong, but who said it? Who said? The Most High said it. We repeat it to inform others of what he said, but the command came from him. The authority comes from above, and he has the authority and power to render judgment when his commands are not obeyed. Man didn't create those laws, but yet he believes that he can undo them by passing a law. As I said the last time, the laws of man will get you killed. There is a higher law, and we obey because he said so. Galatians 5, 8 tells us who is exempt from the law. It says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So the fact that you're being led by him is demonstrating that you have submitted to the word. You now have the word living on the inside of you in spirit form so your actions are dictated by him so yeah of course you don't need the law it's inside of you directing you telling you what you should do shouldn't do you're mature enough and yes I get it no one is perfect and we all make mistakes that's usually the default answer when you speak on this topic we're not talking about occasional slip-ups here. We're talking about practicing and condoning sin and then condemning unbelievers 
for the same acts believers commit. When you're exempt, you're free or released from some liability or requirements to which others are subjected. But we're doing the same thing that they're doing and expecting to be released from the same punishment that they would receive. If you're molesting children because you're a Christian, are you exempt? No, I don't think so. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Leviticus 18.22 Has he changed this law? No, he hasn't. Exodus 20.13 Thou shalt not kill. Yet abortion is now legal. Hebrews 13.4 Marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. But now we have leaders, those we call famous, and even some religious leaders winking at living together outside of the marriage covenant because everybody's doing it. Times may change, but the word remains the same. It's not okay just because your favorite movie star or media personality is doing it. They don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Exodus 20 and 2. You shall have no other gods before me. So is humanity ignoring the laws of God because those in positions of authority sanctioned the things he told us not to do. This comes from Acts 17.30. Although God overlooked the ignorance of earlier times, he now commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. Who said it was wrong to kill, fornicate, be intimate with someone of the same sex? Who said it? God said it. Yah said it, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who owns it all. He has given us laws, statutes, and command, and it's not open for debate in Congress. We cannot separate the authority of our Creator from His Word is wrong because He said so. So just because the United States and other nation is now, nations are now legalizing behaviors and condoning acts the Creator hates, it only makes it legal in the eyes of man, but it's still wicked in the eyes of God. So let me restate, just to make sure that you understand clearly if you are embracing laws that are legal yet wicked, you will answer to him and give an account because the earth is his. He owns it. He owns you. He created you. And why do you need to keep his laws? Because he said so. That goes for believers and unbelievers. So join me next time. Shalom.